gather in this place today. Holy Spirit, come and have your way. Have your way. As we lay aside our own desire, sweep across our hearts with holy fire. Oh, have your way. This is your house. is your house, your home, we welcome you today. As we offer up our hearts and lives, let them be a living sacrifice, oh have your In everything we do, be glorified in everything we say. Oh, have your way. This is your house, your home. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you. This is your house, your. What do you want me to do for you? A sick man came 
crying. The only this man was totally shattered. He thought he was cursed from his leprosy. And this man cried out to Jesus, Master, if you want, you can heal me. Jesus asked him, Do you believe this? Do you believe I can heal you? A question Jesus is asking every one of us here. Jesus, I believe. Jesus be ready to let go of every secret you are clinging on to of every anxiety that bothers you let every problem in your marriage let it all go into the heart of Jesus tell him Jesus I thought life was in my control
by the blood of Jesus My sins are washed away We sing for joy to God our strength is Be excellent in what is good and be innocent of all evil. And the God of peace will soon cut Satan underneath your feet. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Let me say Romans 16. 16.
Sentience is here with us, uh, together with two monks from what was the former Benedictine Abbey here in Ramsgate. It's a wonderful thing that uh, after all those years here, when, when the Benedictine Fathers having moved out, this place will now be retained, as it were, in Catholic hands, and through the retreat centre, I hope, will help uh, many Catholics over the coming years to grow in their faith and be confident proclaimers of the Gospel. So as always, when we come together to celebrate the Eucharist, when we are fed with the Word of God and the Scriptures, and his body and blood when we receive communion, we are conscious that we're not worthy. But Christ came to forgive sins, and he is very ready always to forgive us when we acknowledge our sins and ask his forgiveness. So we begin by acknowledging our sins, asking God for forgiveness, and the forgiveness of one another. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. religious men and women and lay people. And I think that's very significant as we come together on the second Sunday of Lent to celebrate and give thanks to God for the opening of this new retreat centre and in welcoming the Vincentians to the diocese uh, and to discern in times of prayer and retreat here what is God asking you to do. Because that's the prayer we should ask God every morning. Lord, what do you want of me today? And then we have to just sit back and listen. We're all great talkers, says I as I'm going on and on. <laughs> so I say this to myself as much as you. Um, we talk a lot. We live in a noisy, hectic, busy world. We never stop or rarely stop to just sit down and be quiet with God because that's when we can begin to hear his voice spoken deep in our hearts and that's what we need to do every day if we can you won't do it as the Carthusians would do it in a, uh, an enclosed building where there's plenty of time so to speak for that quiet prayer and reflection uh, mothers and fathers can't do it uh, as enclosed monks and sisters could because you've got family, you've got each other to look after your families, your children but we can all squeeze a little bit of time make that time, 10-15 minutes each day to be quiet with God and say, here I am Lord, I come to do your will open my ears that I may hear in other words let me hear your words spoken deep in my heart. Open my eyes that I may see. I may see the opportunities today to live the gospel out. Because our faith is not just something that we hold in our hearts, which we celebrate when we come to Mass. Let us ask him today to renew in us the faith he gave us through our baptism. The gift of the Holy Spirit who lives deep in our hearts. And we ask him too for that generosity to spend a little time listening to that spirit day by day and being guided and led to proclaim the gospel, not just by what we say, but by the way we behave. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
of Betsy, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Amen. And we ask you now to bless the new guardians of the light of the gospel and their new venture at this retreat center, which will continue the presence of the Catholic faith on this site. So Lord, bless this place, the Divine Retreat Center, which will be a center of evangelization to this area, to the wider community, and by your gift, technology, to beyond the shores of this Isle of Panic. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. So the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Approval, the last is ended. Thanks be to God. His Grace, the Archbishop says, he has spoken. By the very nature of this, of our Catholic community, we come from all over. But what links us all together is this great work of faith that has begun in this place today. Many years ago, I was a, a chaplain with the Apostleship of the Sea, and the entire crew uh, was from India, from Kerala. 
And all they talked about, all they talked about was this place called Potter. think to myself, that must be some place where they have to lock in the retreaters. And the remarkable thing was the way that the experience of the retreat at Potter and the great work of the Vincentians uh, touched the lives of so many people. And that's obviously the case. We look at these, this wonderful number who are here today. Today, this is a great act of faith on behalf of the Vincentians and all of you who come here to support this great work. But it is a work, as the Archbishop said, of the Gospel. So it's not just for us. Not just for us to come on retreat here. It is for us to be able to create the facilities and the work here to, yes, encourage our faith, but also to spread the faith beyond the walls just of the monastery. To spread it particularly through the work of Divine TV. This is a remarkable work of the Gospel. And I pay real tribute so far to the work that has been done. But there is much to be done to have a good and orthodox Catholic television program and channel 24 hours a day here in our country. And where will it start? We'll start in exactly the place where St Augustine stepped ashore to preach the gospel all those years ago. You continue that wonderful work. On behalf of all of the ethnic chaplains in London, because we're all part of that, I want to say a big welcome to our community and thank you for your great faith. Of the inauguration of the Divine Retreat Center, St Augustine Abbey, Ramsgate. I am sure that the Archdiocese of Sadark, the Vincentian congregation and the large number of people who are associated with this ministry are very happy today. It is a historical moment. Today we are reopening the historical and heritage building of St. Augustine's Abbey after its closure for three years back. <laughs> this monastery was closing um, three years ago. She's been praying for three years. And there was... I got people to pray all over across the country. Even my mother, when she came to Ramsgate, was throwing miraculous medals of Our Lady over the wall. <laughs> and, uh, and here we are. But this is a wonderful place, it's a wonderful town, and it's a wonderful Catholic community, you're very welcome here. This is also a spiritual centre, it's a shrine, it's worth St. Augustine, the first missionary to the English people landed in 597, and I think together we're going to make this a fantastic shrine for this country, because we can do a lot of cooperation in this, and I think it's going to be tremendous. We, Cardinal Newman spoke about the first spring being when St. Augustine came to this land to bring Christianity. The second spring was in the 19th century when this abbey was built and the church and Pugin, the architect of our parliament, was around. But there's a need for a third spring, isn't there? There's a need for a third spring. When I saw in this tent, which I was amazed at, the sheer size of it, it's the biggest marquee I've ever seen. In the, in the middle was a cherry blossom tree and you built the tent around it. The cherry blossom is the, the sign, the symbol of spring in this land. And what, it, what an incredible spring we have. ...of your life duly here to serve you, to pray for you, to listen to you in the name of the Lord.